Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to talk about MX Linux. This is one of the most popular Linux distributions for old computers, for new computers alike. And a lot of people swear by this distribution. It looks and feels amazing. It is on the lighter side, definitely not the lightest, but it doesn't matter if you are running I don't know, maybe a five to seven to eight year old computer. This is going to run like butter. And today we're going to dive right into MX Linux 23.1 and talk about what makes it so special. So on first boot, we are greeted with the welcome screen MX 23.1 Libretto. Libretto, I'm not sure but you have the option to install. I haven't installed it. This is a live environment, but we get to use and see everything that it has to offer. So at the welcome screen, you have FAQ, user manual, videos, you can, what you wanna contribute, you can have an MX tour, everything that you would want to know to uh, set yourself up with this environment, with this operating system, it's present. And I really love that they have the time as well as the hard disk percentage, the memory utilization, and the CPU utilization in MX Linux. So the first is the intro. So using a new operating system for the first time can seem challenging and scary. This is very true for most people. So it's a very valid thing to say, and we have different topics that are covered under different tabs. So let's go through them one by one. The first is the panel. So as you can see, this is the panel or you might know this as the task bar. At the bottom, you have the start menu. You have a couple of icons. So this is the battery or the power settings. So uh, you can launch the XFCE power manager if you want to. So you have a couple of settings for what to do when the power button is pressed, when the sleep button is pressed, system display, a couple of settings. Very standard things, but very useful to put at the front. You have option to unmount any disk drives that you have. You can also update through the Synaptic Package Manager, which we're not gonna do right now. You can see your clipboard, which is really good. And they're using Clipman, so we can go into it and we can change the settings if we really want to. And you also have ethernet connections, VPN connections are also in here in one umbrella, under one umbrella, that's pretty good. You also have volume, so line in, line out, and you have an audio mixer, which is, really good so if you go to advanced i can see a lot of options for latency offset and you can have uh, all the different output devices listed for recording nothing is recording and playback uh, you can overdrive the amount of volume so over amplification beyond 100 percent input devices very very advanced even though it's not the flashiest but very very mature and very advanced i would say the next is the whisker menu. So the whisker menu is the start screen of XFCE of MX Linux over here. And it's really good. So you have different categories, favorites, all applications, accessories, development, games. And even though it doesn't come pre-installed with uh, Steam or Lutris or whatever, you can easily download them from the software center, which we are going to explore a little bit later. So you have also a uh, MTP client for MP3 players, Strawberry Plays Music, VLC is here, which is really good. Under MX Tools, you have a lot of options. So this is basically uh, kind of like the settings, uh, but different from the settings because you have MX Tools and settings segregated over here for different purposes. So you have uh, about, so you can view uh, about your system. So basically the welcome screen, but I guess in a bigger, uh, in a bigger window, you have brightness control, uh, Debian installer, disk manager, formatting the USB, job scheduler, live USB kernel updater, boot options, boot repair, ton of things. Some of these, I don't even know how to use, but if you know, well, you know that you are in the right spot. And it also provides an option to install the proprietary NVIDIA drivers from the repo. So if you are a gamer, this has got you covered too. You can also configure user installed packages. So that's something which is really nice. In terms of Office, they offer LibreOffice and you have everything for LibreOffice as well as Foliate for viewing your eBooks and PDF Arranger for viewing PDFs and QD, QPDF View 
for uh, like it says a tab document viewer using Qt and the Poplar library. And you have settings and system. So inside settings, you have about me accessibility ad block. Wow, you have ad block. We're definitely gonna come back to that. So you know what? Let's not go through go through the settings right now, and we're gonna open it later. Let's see what system has. So bash config, chonky a conky toggle. Disk usage analyzer, HTOP, Gparted, very standard things, all packaged in a beautiful manner. You have Thunar, Thunar file manager, really good. Uh, Thunar is what is bundled with XFCE, so that's not a surprise, I guess. And the icon, I guess it's papyrus and it looks really clean. 4.18.4 is the XFCE version that we're on, so that's something uh, to consider. Now we already talked about the task bar, so it has two, okay, so panel and it talks about the task bar. So you, I guess you can right click on the panel and you do have a lot of options. You can go to your panel preferences, you can add or remove panels, you can change the mode to desk bar to horizontal. Horizontal is at the top, vertical is over there and desk bar is, okay, so vertical the the writings are rotated but for desk bar the writings are horizontal that's that's really cool keep panel above windows disabled by default which is okay automatically increase the length we also have appearance so dark mode that's okay not gonna enable dark mode light mode seems better over here for me and background solid color non just auto size automatically opacity all that good stuff. You also have properties, you can move and remove, and style is transparent, separator, handle dots, different styles, you can expand. We're not gonna go into the details, but we know what it is. Now, Conky, what we were talking about, is actually responsible for this uh, little widget that we have. And I don't think I can right click or left click on it. It's a lightweight system monitor that can display any kind of information about your desktop either as text or using simple progress bars and graph widgets with different fonts and colors. MX Tools, we already talked about that. MX Welcome, MX Tweak. So you can change a lot of the things from here. You can change the theme, compositor, install apps. So these are all uh, like screenshots, updating, MX Snapshot. But before we go through that, let's just open settings and let's see what it has in store for us. So we have settings manager, definitely not settings editor. Let's open settings manager and let's see what we have. So uh, let's increase the size just a little bit. And over here, okay. So you have about me, appearance, brightness, system tray, a lot of the things which we have seen earlier. So in appearance, you would have MX comfort, Advita dark, Advita. Uh, a lot of these would look really good. So Advita dark, yeah, it looks good. I dig it. Let's keep it. You have different fonts. So the default is Noto Sans regular and monospace regular. You have a ton of options to change. Anti-aliasing is enabled. Subpixel order is RGB. Very standard stuff and very good to see that all of these are present. Let's go through, uh, you have Ohaj. Ohaj means, I don't know, calendar? Ohaj preferences. This is French. I forget the exact meaning of Ohaj, but let's move on. We have panel. We've already checked out. Window manager tweaks. Uh, skip windows that have skip pager. Lots of different options for... Man, come to think of it, I haven't seen so many options in GNOME or other places, but this is like, it's not in your face. You have to go find it, but if you know what you're looking for, then you have a ton of different things. I don't even know what most of these are. Like this is display composting, so that's okay. We have to keep that enabled. And display full screen windows, uh, overlay windows directly, windows preview in place of icons when cycling, show shadows under pop-up icons. Really good things, really important things. We also have terminal settings, not gonna open that. Display, we are at 1920 by 1080. 60 Hertz refresh rate pretty standard stuff, mouse and touchpad. So we are on a virtual mouse because of course, uh, acceleration, behavior, theme, even for mouse, we can change themes. So that's pretty good. Let's go ahead with advice DMZ white. Uh, yeah, white cursor, not bad. 
and we have system keyboard system locale print settings default applications which is yep for browser firefox for mail it's thunderbird utilities file manager thunar xfce terminal and speaking of terminal let's let's just open it up real quick so you have terminal emulator and you also have xfce terminal but they open the same thing, I'm assuming? About XFCE terminal, XFCE terminal. So they are the exact same thing, but you just have two options. That's a little weird. Okay, so let's run top and let's see what kind of memory usage we are getting. So, okay, one 1.3 gigabytes used. That's uh, That's substantial, but you know, I have allocated six gigabytes, six and a half gigabytes, almost six and a half gigabytes. So anyway, default applications, we can see uh, for others, lots of options. Let's uh, let's get out of here before I lose my mind because there is a ton of options that I haven't seen. And oh, this is the ad block settings. So demo is the password and the antics, advert blocker tool, add stuff to the your etc. hosts file so that many advertising servers and websites can't connect to this PC. You can choose to block ads, malware, gambling, fake news, and social media. Blocking ad servers protects your privacy, saves you bandwidth, greatly improves web browsing speed. Do you want to proceed? I sure do. Okay, so you can block all kinds of websites. This is this is pretty good. So if you have a kid or something, this is this is gonna make sure that he's not involved with some sketchy stuff. That's pretty good. And it loads the block list from GitHub, so that's that's cool. So I guess uh, if it does this on a regular basis, as in when more websites keep getting added, it can keep itself updated. It's not downloading right now. It's an issue with my internet, but let's not focus on that and let's move on. So I think we covered most of these and you also have menu editor. So I believe this is for the whisker menu and okay. So we have a ton of things, run program, terminal emulator settings. But uh, you can see we have all the applications neatly categorized and you also have workspaces in here which is pretty interesting we have two workspaces I'm not 100 percent sure how to how to move in between workspaces okay so you, you scroll with your mouse and it just takes you from one workspace to another that's pretty standard and xfce might not look the flashiest but it does have all of the settings and it does have all the functionality that you might ever want to uh, use. Again, I'm putting the wrong password. Let's put demo and let's see what it has. Light DM greet settings. So this is the user image. You can disable or enable that. Default image, you can put something, icons, theme, panel, uh, window position. Wow. Select base point and its position horizontal. So windows that you open will be in the center. And miscellaneous, you have a ton of settings. Okay. Wow, there were a lot of settings in here and uh, okay, so after a long look at settings, let's go to the terminal and we are using Debian packaging and we are running XFCE 4.18 along with Advaita GTK3, but the most important thing that we have is 6.5 kernel. Now this is not the standard MX Linux install. This is MX Linux AHS, which I believe stands for Advanced Hardware Support. This is a special version which comes with an advanced kernel so that all the modern hardware that you might have are properly supported. Next, let's see what kind of software we can install on MX Linux. So let's go to MX Package Installer and we have to put in our password for this one. Okay, so, wow, I mean, fonts are real, a little too big. Uh, I guess we can change that. So you have popular applications, enabled repos, test repo, which is not advised to use. So let's go to popular applications. Under audio, we have Asunder, Audacious, Audacity, Clementine. Wow, you have pretty much everything you can imagine, including Spotify, that's pretty good. Browser, we have Brave, Chromium, Falcon, Firefox, Google Chrome, LibreWolf, Microsoft Edge, Opera, Pale Moon, Vivaldi. So, okay, this 
package installer might not be much of a looker, but it does have everything. And I love that it has a section called children and you have something called preschool, primary, scratch, secondary. I'm not gonna go into what these are because I don't know, but I would love to like see something on YouTube. So we also have desktop environments. So Budgie, Gnome, KDE5, LXDE, Mate, XFCE. This is so flexible, MX Linux, if you don't really like the look of XFCE, which, you know, somebody who's coming from KDE Plasma or, uh, or from GNOME, that's a fair point to consider. So you can switch over to anything from this list, which I think is a very, very good uh, option to provide to, and by the way, XFCE looks like it's an old distribution, but don't be fooled. This is just the skin. You can download MX Linux with GNOME or with KDE out of the box. And even if you download it, download it with XFCE, you clearly have the option to go with whatever you want. Development, we have Gini, I'm not sure what these are. Uh, VS Code, this is the only one with which I am familiar. And inside docs, you have Cairo and Plank. I have used Plank in Linux Mint. Under email, you have Evolution, Kmail, Thunderbird. I have used Evolution and I love this email client. Inside file manager, you have Dolphin, Nemo, Paxman. Dude, they provide everything. Something like Linux Mint or Ubuntu, you only get Nemo or Nautilus, but here you can do whatever you want with your operating system. It's like, you have the flexibility of Arch, but you're not running Arch, except you're not dealing with packages. You're just dealing with the different kinds of software that you would want to use on a daily basis. That's really cool. I cannot stress this enough. It also has little descriptions to tell you what they are. And it is so good, man. There are so many categories. It's going to take me an entire day to go the, to go through these. You have Lutris, Play on Linux. Basically, even though it isn't a looker, it has everything from Blender to GIMP to, to icons. You have kernels. You Oh my God, you have everything. You can see this is AHS, so Advanced Hardware Support, and it's on 6.5. I guess as time goes on, this will be uh, increased. The version will be bumped. Language, Media Center, Kodi, Plex, Media Converter, Handbrake, Messaging, Discord. Wow, it has everything. I did not imagine it would have everything by the look of it. Honestly, it didn't look like much and I thought it just, it wouldn't have a ton of things, but oh my God, this is just as well flushed out as something like Gnome Software or uh, I don't know, Pop Shop or anything similar it has everything dude this is beyond my imagination that that is so good and, it, and you can also get wallpapers from the older installs that is so cool like i checked out linux uh light a couple of years ago and it didn't have so many options and it, and that was xfce too so i kind of had an expectation going in that it would kind of be the same but it isn't it has everything that you can imagine and it's pretty cool so the only thing which we have before closing off the video is just right clicking and seeing this beautiful context menu. You can open terminal from here, Thunar, you can find files, create sim link, arrange desktop icons, even open your applications. What else could you want? You have desktop settings and as our ritual is, we are gonna go ahead and pick a wallpaper that's gonna look amazing. And we're also gonna use it as a thumbnail for the video. If you made it this far, man, kudos to you because it is a heck of a long video. I really like this wallpaper. That looks really good, really clean. What about this one? Yeah, I love this one too. I think I'm gonna stick with this one. And so that was it guys. Thank you so much for watching. It's been an amazing distribution, far better than I expected because it's been two years and I didn't remember much going in so i was pleasantly surprised thank you so much for watching and i'll catch you on the flip side peace